morning and welcome to worship on this the third Sunday of Easter. I talked to John Deal a little while ago and he told me that his mother had been in the hospital for a week. They had to stretch her esophagus and then when she got back to Summit Place had to be quarantined for 14 days. She is much better for which we give thanks. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Greetings from Epiphany Lutheran Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Reading from Acts in the second chapter. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Here ends the reading. Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from 1 Peter, the first chapter. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went to, with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know what has taken place in these days? He asked them, 
What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. The Easter window is a scene from our Gospel today the resurrected Christ meeting two of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. The window was given in gratitude for the lives of Charles and Louise Hoyle. Louise was a retired school teacher, the mother of two admired women. She was entertaining, and one of those people you just like to be around. On the day of the dedication of the window, she walked up to Steve Hackney, the artist, and asked with a big smile, why is Jesus wearing sunglasses? Steve replied immediately, the eyes are the window to the soul. That's why the disciples did not recognize him. It's true. Most of the time, if you look into a person's eyes, you can tell what they think and feel, and to some degree, who they are. The eyes do communicate various emotions. Wide-eyed eyes communicate fear, anxiety, or being overburdened. While a squint of the eyes communicate anger or disgust. Dreamy eyes, whatever that is, are said to communicate love and affection. I think Steve was right. If the two disciples had taken the time to look into Jesus' eyes, they would have recognized their risen Lord. Today's gospel tells us that the disciples were looking sad. Of course, they had seen their teacher and mentor die. How can we not understand their depression and despair, especially now with all the sickness and dying around us? People are worried and depressed. People's mental health has been taking a collective toll in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. Along with the tens of thousands of deaths happening across the world, the virus has caused economic struggles due to business closings indefinitely and furloughs and layoffs, no money for food or rent or mortgages, coupled with the health concerns and losing loved ones to this virus. 
Now these stressors have caused an increase in people drinking too much and turning to drugs. The largest number of virus cases in North Carolina are in Mecklenburg County. Police there have seen a 24% increase in emergency calls about drug overdoses since March the 26th. And suicide reports are up around the globe with a big increase in suicides across the U.S. In Italy, a 34-year-old nurse committed suicide after learning that she tested positive for the virus. She was terrified that she had infected others while on the front lines. In the UK, a 19-year-old waitress committed suicide over fears of her mental health from self-isolation. A few days before she was found unresponsive, the teen warned relatives that she couldn't deal with her world closing in and being stuck inside. In the U.S., things have been just about as bleak, with New York reporting, reporting a man with cancer hanging himself in a Manhattan hospital after he realized he tested positive for COVID-19. I can't go on because examples like this are increasing exponentially every day. In Matthew's version of the Sermon on the Mount, Christ taught his disciples that the eye is the light of the soul. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. So many around us feel full of darkness. In Boston, a helpline backed by the nonprofit group Samaritans, whose motto is, you are not alone, said it receives suicide calls at a rate of 350 a day over the course of a week. In Detroit, Atlanta, Richmond, Houston, Chicago, Los Angeles, have all seen huge increases in suicide calls. New York City, as you would expect, has seen an increase of over 200%. What can we do? What are we called by Christ to do? If you know of a person who is living alone, with little or no family to help them, Contemplate checking on them and letting them know someone cares. On the news on Thursday, a group of North Carolinians are challenging people to give their stimulus checks to those in need, only if they can spare it. That's Bill, that's groceries, that's health care, pledge my check volunteer, Kevin Miller said. That's why they created Pledge My Check. From a small business to a neighbor, a food bank, you can pick whatever you want to give to. We are a caring congregation, and I am sure you will find creative ways to help those who Jesus called neighbors. The disciples finally recognized the risen Christ when he broke bread with them. For now, we cannot celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion with each other. The Eucharist, after all, is a nurturing element of our faith. In the meantime, Christ has given us the teachings for our loving and nurturing and helping each other. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals 
who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For broken systems we see around us today, show us how to cooperate with our neighbors for the good of all. Restrain the nation from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and greed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, disparaging, desiring healing in body and spirit, especially all those who are hospitalized. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promises of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts this Easter season for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of a new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.